What is up guys? Welcome once again to Gaming Gent. We are going to do a series of uh, specific uh, guides on uh, specific topics of Winter's Coming, uh, Game of Thrones Winter's Coming, you know the deal. And we're going to start with the talents and uh, very basically, very basic, very from the top to the bottom. Talents are given to you as you level up your lord, as you already know. You can find them on your <coughs> upper uh, left corner. Well, you will see your lord, and in one of the tabs you will see the talents. These are just uh, a couple of uh, two, a couple of trees of skills that you can choose as you wish, uh, and points are gathered as you level. Okay, it's pretty basic, and, and pretty much like any other game. So what we're going to focus here is uh, what is the best way to spend them. What are general tips that you should use and you should think about when uh, when you are spending your points. And uh, if you saw the previous guide, which was like the best possible start that you could have on Game of Thrones Winter is Coming, you will see that we are focusing on construction and on research. That's the first thing. We advise to go this way, the right way, uh, meaning right and left, not, not the right way, but uh, we advise you to focus on growth before focusing on battle. Okay? So, First, we're going to do construction and research. That's pretty much well known. Uh, but here is one of the things. You have levels to it. There is construction speed 1, construction speed 2. The general rule is to always start by the uh, higher tier of it. If there is construction 2, start with 2 instead of 1. And why is that? It is because uh, the higher the tier of the research or the talent, uh, you will get most you will get a, a higher ceiling on, on the benefit that it gives. For example, if you go construction 1, you'll get 30% by spending 10 points, and no more than 30. It's limited to 30. But if you do construction 2, you'll see that, you, of course, you have to spend a little more points, but you will be able to get to 55% with 20. Okay? So, that's the basic thing. You will get most out of uh, getting the higher tiers first even though it might look different because with 10 you get 30 on, on construction one but here you only get 18 so it's uh it's uh the small difference but uh, i always advise everyone to get higher tiers first after that you need to learn about a talent reset when you uh are building the way that we are which is focusing on growth you uh must know before research, before resets, that you will be vulnerable. Other players will spend uh, points on battle or they will also have more level than you. So you will be very weak against foreign attacks. So you need to learn two things. One, uh, you will be vulnerable. You need to keep your research, I mean, your uh, resources, I'm sorry. You need to keep them low so, they, so they don't, uh, you don't get them stolen. And also because people will scout you, and if you have 20 million iron and 5 million stone, it is more likely that they will attack you because they will try to take your resources away from you. And that brings a problem because when they attack you, they will probably either capture or even kill your lord. And why is that important? It's because the talents are uh, linked to your lord. He's the one that carries all your talents, so if he gets either captured or killed, you won't be able to get the benefit of your talents, okay? So it's important that you know how to take care of him. Uh, it's, a, it's a general advice. If you're going away, you're going out with your friends or even sleeping or working, leave your, um, leave your uh, lord on the shelter. So the shelter works pretty much as a basement. Everyone will go there. And no matter who comes, they won't come out. So <laughs> you pretty much have him safe. Okay? You can, uh, any, at any time, you can just uh, recall them and they will be uh, all back uh, ready to go in a second. So it, there is no really a problem with that. So take care of your Lord. Don't let him, cap don't let him get captured because you will lose those benefits and then you have to pre probably pay a ransom or even wait for it. And that, that will halt your progress. Okay, so that's really, really important. There's another way that, um, another, since we're on this, uh, you could maybe, if you, 
you will also lose the importance of that guy. So if you're using a, an important one like Chris or Aria or someone someone that you are getting passives from, you will also lose them. So another good practice may be just to uh, name a lord that is not really important. In, in this example, Baris for me is not important, so fuck it. If he gets, he has no balls, you know. Anyways, so that's important. Go from the bottom to the top. Take care of your lord. Know that you will be vulnerable <laughs> uh, to foreign attacks and keep growing. That's the most important thing. So, construction and research are the ones that are going, uh, you know, as the most important things. So, after that, another thing that you need to know is if, even though there are specs that are recommended, there is no specific perfect spec for you to follow. We're just going to try to guide you and get you to the ones that works best for us. So, after you finish construction and research, around level 30, when your lord is level 30, you will be able to finish both construction 1 and 2 and research construction 1 and 2. That is a whopping 85% each that you will get at level 30. So that's really important for you to do. When, once you do that, you'll notice that you're, you're, you're building healthy, you have your buildings and your research is going fine, but you will find out that you don't have enough troops and your power on, on I mean, troops are not really uh, coherent with the with the way that you have built so const uh, training speed becomes very important so one of my what i would advise is as soon as you finish that uh, go over to the other uh, to the other to the left side of the of the trees and start going towards troop training speed okay because once you unlock level Tier three troops, they will take about between ten hours, maybe twelve, each batch. So you need to get that lower. Of course, you will build mints and everything else, but it will still be a slow process, and you don't want to be wasting um, speed ups on troops. So start working on a uh, troop training speed one and two, of course, and uh, that will get you to another point where you will have to, when once you have everything done then you could focus maybe on uh, gathering speed or uh, army carrying capacity it's up to you but it's of course you already have everything that is very important covered that is one way to do it there is another spec that is called uh, hyper farming i believe which is just uh for uh, just forfeit every fight aspect of your cd and your lord and just go full retard on research and uh I'm sorry, on a gathering and carrying capacity, also in production. So once you get those two level up, then you will focus, you'll focus on gathering speed, uh, which is the speed that you, the, the, the time that you take to farm a node outside of the city, or ca army carrying capacity, which is uh, the, the, the weight capacity that your troops can carry. For example, if you, for just a quick example, if you go to a node or attack someone, which is also valid, uh, and you you go with with a hundred guys, you'll bring up twenty. If you increase this, you you can bring forty with the same action, forty, forty-five, whatever. So and this works for uh, gathering, but it also works for attacking other lords, other cities. So that's another way to go. Uh, and of course, you will find that uh, specific uh, resource uh, uh, production will be boosted in this spec. That would be the same as uh, focusing on just one of the resources. Because as you know, uh, and if you saw the other guy, you, you'll see that you don't need to build any more than one farm. Uh, and gold production is not really related to this. So you will focus on one of these trees. On this tree, I'm sorry. Uh, which would be wood, uh, stone, or iron. So accordingly, you'll build only one of them because you will spend research and talents only on one of them. And that would make it optimal for you because you'll probably have an alliance member, a friend or something that will do the same, I'm sorry, with a different one. And that would make you trade and that would be great because you have the option to trade through the market. Now, some people will say, hey, but you have a, a tax rate. You have to pay taxes for doing this. Yes, you do. But uh, that 15% that I'm getting right now is easily uh, taken uh, because I, I already have, I am producing more than 15 percent uh, so it's pretty obvious that it's a good way to go 
So that's high performing. Uh, of course, that's the weakest thing that you could do uh, army wise. But some people do it. Even I've heard some people even having four accounts. You know, the main account and then one for iron, one for lumber, and one or wood, and one for the other one. But I don't recommend that. That's always the time of your life. But if you want to go ahead, that's up to you. I cannot stop you. So. Once you know that, uh, there is another spec that is really, really, really important that you must know is, which is the battle spec, which is pretty obvious. You don't waste any single point on any research or anything that means growing, and you focus everything on fighting. Okay. Now, why would somebody do that? Uh, of course, to beat people up, but there is a very good reason to do it. Is that because there are castle sieges, and you will probably be in an alliance, and you will fight for castles. And when you fight for castles, you need to be useful. You need to not only send troops, uh, but you need to be uh, the best that you can. Why is that? It's because the same. It's the same reason why you don't keep tier one or tier two troops. It's because of morale. This game works that in the same way that when when two armies confront each other, uh, whoever start dying first, uh, the troops, probably as in real life, start lowering their stats because they kind of get scared, I guess. Uh, but it, it will weaken your troops. Even though you have the better troops, if you have weaker ones dying first, that will be detrimental to the power of the, of the alive troops. So in the very same way, if you bring weaker troops to your rallies, you won't be able to, to, to do much because even though they're tier three and they ask, to be, they ask tier three for you, from you, I'm sorry, you, they will be weaker, they will die soon, sooner, and that will be detrimental to the whole objective. So there is this, you need to have a battle spec ready for you on, on castle siege days, or maybe if you're going on an invasion or something like that, you need to have it. So that brings the other question, which are the best points to uh, invest? And we found out that the best way, uh, the, the best way to affect exactly this is uh, army health. Because one could think that maybe it's the racing attack or racing defense. No, it is health because of morale. So first priority should be army health. After that, you should I recommend uh, that you go with one of the uh, troop types. And in this case, I'm going to go cavalry because we have King's Landing, etc. That that's up to your ally, to, to your alliance. I'm sorry, but you should focus on one because that's the way that you're going to fight. And after that, you could go for defense and attack. So, first of all, army health. It is really important because of what I already explained. Your troops will take, will live longer, and that will keep morale longer while the opposing, while the opposite troops are dying. So, that would be the two best ways. And that brings us back to talents, talent reset. I'm sorry. You need to be able to get your talent resets uh, ready for game day. Now, this is a pretty simple item, as you can see here, you can get it from the Alliance shop and from the Diamond shop. I do not recommend that you spend diamonds on this because they're kind of easy to get. You don't really need to have many. Uh, and so what I advise you to get it from is from the Alliance shop. Their cost is only 45k, uh, which is really easy and gettable when you help, for example, and here you help people build and you get points. In a couple days, you'll have enough to get at least one. So do not waste diamonds on that, but have enough. If you must do so, but try not to, okay? So um, after we know all this, we'll go just to a couple of uh, common questions about this. Uh, and one is uh, very important, which means, which is about um, construction, for example, research or troop training. When you get, uh, when you are starting a building, it will, I'm sorry, I don't have anyone, any building to start to show you, but you'll see in this song that it will tell you how much it will take. It will take two hours, it will take two days, 20 days, whatever. Right below it, you'll see, it, it will show you the real time that it will take, which takes into consideration every single talent, research, equipment, everything that, that is currently uh, on you and it will show you this new total, this new price. Once you press the, the build now or the research now or, or whatever button it is to start the, the research or the training or the construction, 
that uh, number will get frozen. So once you start it, there is no need for you to keep your set, your building set and your talents in the end. You can just move them around and it won't affect you. So if there is a siege day, be sure to get everything construction, construction wise and everything else done. And then you can switch to battle without having any detrimental effect. It is very important that you know this because this is also applicable. Uh, this also applies to uh, Lord Equipment. So, for example, right now I, I'm only focusing every piece that I have uh, available, of course, is going to research. So, because I'm going to start a research zone. Once I do that, th there's no need for me to keep it. So, that you need to know that. And that will, that's also a wise way to, expand, to spend your talent resets. Okay? And the other question that goes which is probably not that related to this uh, to this talent guide, but related to what I just said, is where to put your commanders. For example, somebody, somebody might say, hey, I have Melisandre. Melisandre gives me construction speed, gives me uh, gives a boost to archers. Where do I put her to get her passives? Some people will tell you that you need to name her Lord. Some people will tell you that you need to put them, put her or whoever command you're talking about, you need to put them on the wall. And though all of that is false, it does just fallacy. You just need to have them. Uh, being and being unlocked and being on your city or, or on your army, it's enough to get the benefits from. Now, the only thing that you need to have is the commander, but you also need to have him leveled up. Let's take this for example. If you have face here, face has uh, right here in specialization, you'll see his passives. Just for having him, we'll have this one, which is pretty much what everyone has. But he will be able to give me gold production, gold production, I'm sorry, infantry attack, and infantry defense, which is, sounds pretty neat. But as you can see, they're locked. And they are locked because FaZe is only a level one commander. Once he gets to level two, he will unlock the first one, which is gold production, as you can see right here. Once he gets to level four, he'll unlock this one. And once he gets to level six, he will unlock this other one. So there is no need to have him on the wall or as a Lord. You just need to upgrade him. Now there are two ways and might be confusing uh, because there's upgrading your Lord as, there are three ways actually, I'm sorry, three. Level of the Lord, then you have his, uh, I don't know what's, how, could I, how should I, the rank, there you go. Your, the rank of the Lord, which affects the passives, and there is also the quality of the Lords, which is what you get through medals. What you need to focus in is on this one, the rank. Okay. Now you will notice also that once you get here, you'll see these different dots with different colors. That means that once you upgrade, uh, upgrade the um, what's the name, <laughs> the quality of them, those benefits will become better, but they will still be the same benefits. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Sorry if I wasn't that clear, but anyway. So understand that you do not need them to, you don't need to have them anywhere. You just need to have them. For example, I have uh, Varys here and I have him as a, um, once again, a rank four commander. So that means that I have not unlocked level, uh, level six because I don't need to right now. That's pretty much as it is. So that's all you need to know. Uh, they start really basic, but once you get to level six, for example, uh, you'll get everything worked out very well. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, do not hesitate to use your talent resets. Communicate with your alliance. That's pretty much obvious right now. And uh, grow healthy. Grow. Uh, have a me have a purpose and make every one of your decisions go to your goals. And not, not, do not spread them all around because you won't give it benefit at all. All right. If you have any questions, please leave them on the, on the comment box. Uh, I just started making content, so it would be helpful that you uh, help me. Um, I would be, I would really appreciate that you share this with your alliance. I will make many guides like this one. This one will be about talents, but there will be another one about where to spend money, what are the best packs, best commanders, best way to grow, best way to defend, etc. There's a lot of content that you can make on this and I will do so. 
I'm sorry if it was a little long, it's about 20 minutes, but there is no other way to explain everything in depth. Uh, so I apologize for that. Have a great one. Please subscribe, like, every, every, all of that good stuff that you already know. And I'll see you on the next one. See ya.